Hello everyone, my name is Marty McBrien, Director of Strategic Affairs at the IFRS Foundation. We are in COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh. We've had a very busy week and I'm joined today by three board members who are going to give us the lowdown. Xing Dong, this is your first COP ever. What do you make of it? Well, thank you, Marty. Uh, indeed, this is my first COP. Very honored to be here with Emmanuel and Didi and uh, ISSB colleagues. So let me share three broad impressions. Number one, of course, this is a big gathering of global leaders, stakeholders, NGOs, and of course, us also being here. You know, from the urgency uh, of uh, conversation that uh, from the Secretary General to the chit chat I have had with many people, we all know how urgent it is uh, because time is running out. That is the first message that we all have a sense of urgency. The second is that I have seen many voluntary initiatives. For example, the Egyptians are uh, creating their own voluntary carbon trading system, which is fantastic. The UK published their own uh, transition plan task force report. However, you know, my thinking is that for us to deliver uh, on Paris Agreement, we have to turn voluntary into mandatory. And this is where, you know, the third point I want to make is that there is so much excitement about the job of ISSB and what we do. And um, certainly, you know, that gives me a sense of the urgency and the importance of the work that we do at ISSB. Nadidi, again, this is your first COP. What sort of, what are you hearing about the ISSB as you walk through the corridors? So generally, the audiences and also the panelists have been very relieved about the shift from the alphabet soup to a framework that they can relate to and to mandatory standards so that comparability becomes possible. Second big issue has been a huge embrace and, and joy at the prospects of scalability and proportionality, and the fact that this is a truly global baseline that cuts across jurisdictions, but also across different sizes and tiers of organizations. And lastly, there has been resounding feedback and offers of collaboration and support for capacity building and advisory support. Everyone acknowledges that this path is not going to be easy, but on the other hand, they have acknowledged that we have to set the bar high, embrace scope three. Um, they've been very keen about um, the how. How do we move from disclosures that focus on investments and move that to actual transition plans? And how does that enable um, the unlocking of capital flows, especially to developing and emerging economies? That really speaks nicely to the theme of COP, doesn't it? Together for implementation. And, and I can really hear a shift from what's normally a lot of report launches to some real action first outcomes this year. Which leads me to Emmanuel. Can you, can you summarise you know, our first big announcement we had at COP this week? Yeah, yeah, sure, Mani, thanks. And one thing I, I would like to add is that for me, that particular COP is uh, the first anniversary of the announcement a year ago. Uh, so for us as an organization, it's a very, very special flavor and for all the teams and the foundation. And so, um, you know, just reflecting on what uh, Indeed and Jin Long have said, it's, it's incredible how fast that year has been. And in the same time, uh, how much has been accomplished around us and thanks to the staff and the, you know, the team and the board uh, that we are here. And, and for me, really a tribute as well to the uh, result of the consultation that led to the creation of ISSB being climate first. Not climate only, but climate first because of that urgency that Gino was, uh, was mentioning. And your point about implementation was so true, I felt, uh, over the last couple of days, including with that first announcement that was made two days ago by CDP, Carbon Disclosure Project, that they would incorporate uh, the uh, um, standards of climate, uh, S2 standards, as part of uh, their platform for disclosure. And so starting in the cycle of disclosure of 24, the sort of 20,000 company that reports uh, under CDP uh, will incorporate um, climate data from our standards in our format 
which means basically that half of the global market capitalization will be already in all or in part incorporating our standards. So that's a true uh, game changer in terms of implementation. It's really exciting, isn't it? I, I, I truly couldn't believe just the shift that will make and and how excited companies seem to be hearing that announcement. Yeah, absolutely. Because then again, I mean, that's about what Anidhi was saying about reducing the alphabet mm-hmm. soup and starting to all use the same language to disclose. And digitally as well, which is absolutely. even more exciting. Yeah. Which brings me on to Jing Dong. You've had a big announcement this week as well. Well, indeed. Uh, that is that uh, we have just announced our uh, uh, strategic partnership framework for capacity building. Uh, let me elaborate a little bit on this. Uh, look, uh, a true global baseline standard will not be truly global if at the end of the day, it becomes 90% global north and only 10% global south. Global south faces two challenges. Number one is that so far uh, uh, to cope with climate change, not enough financial flow is coming to global south. Second is that global south faces a multitude of development challenges from COVID to high inflation to debt sustainability. Therefore, the readiness to adopt ISSB standard for global south, the gap is much bigger than global north. That's a fact. And, and therefore, you know, we have to make capacity building to make sure that Global South is ready with the same pace as Global North in in terms of being able to adopt uh, uh, our ISSB standard. And I argue strongly that by adopting uh, uh, um, uh, the ISSB standard, that has a potential to unlock trillions of dollars of investment flow for climate resilience for sustainable development uh, in the global south. So therefore, I think for ISSB to make capacity building an integral part of our mission, to make sure that the global south is ready for accelerated adoption so that that will unlock the investment flow. I think that is a very, very important decision. And of course, I've heard already so many comments supporting this important initiative. But of course, now that, uh, uh, you know, we have said it, we really have to mobilize, uh, you know, to to get it done. In my conversation with uh, with many, uh, 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 you know, uh, many ministers and and policymakers uh, in COP27, I don't think there is a lack of political will to embrace ISSB standard. Right? The gap is really in, is the country ready from preparedness, you know, from technical, uh, 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 technical uh, 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 preparedness, you know, their accountancy bodies, their, their financial analysts, uh, whether they have knowledge base. I think a lot of technical details that we need to be able to offer to or not. As, uh, the last point I want to make is that you know, we cannot do it ourselves. And we really have to mobilize uh, a broad, uh, you know, uh, swap of, of, of uh, partners from, you know, the preparers, the policy makers, uh, the multilaterals, the academia, the foundations, professional association, and we have to walk this journey together. So next year is a year of translating that ambition to action plan. And hopefully by COP28, we will see some early successes. Thanks, Jing Dong. And we've seen a huge amount of support for that too, haven't we? From governments, from multilaterals, right through to corporates, big Indeed. accounting, uh, membership bodies across the world, and all the stakeholders we need to work with. So the challenge is ahead of us now. But we've seen some really interesting calls of support for our work this week. We've had some great bilaterals and great meetings. Nadi, did you want to tell us a bit about the outcome of one of those? Very, very glad to speak about the fact that, first of all, just to say, I know I shouldn't say this, but I am very proud of the ISSB. I'm also very proud of the African continent. Um, 60 days to COP, we had the International Cooperation Forum and the African Ministers Communique called on the ISSB to provide capacity building and advisory support and also called on the African Ministers and jurisdictions to early adopt the ISSB standards so that 
essentially emerging and developing economies can be part of shaping those standards. So we're ensuring a truly global baseline. And what we saw, well, our chair, Emmanuel Faber, had a meeting with the Minister of Egypt and the Minister of Nigeria, Finance, Budget and Planning. And the subsequent day, we saw a press release from the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria is essentially declaring early adoption um, of the international sustainability standards, which means that not just are we one year after the birth of the ISSB at COP26 in a situation where we have our standards almost ready to go early 2023, but we also have our first um, movers um, because it's not just one, there are a number of African jurisdictions. And it's extremely powerful that we have been able to win the faith of those jurisdictions, whereas Jing Dong said it will maybe the hardest to achieve the disclosures. And that's testimony to the fact that we have been expanding our outreach. We are building these standards so that they're truly global and they can be applied across jurisdictions. And that just makes me feel extremely proud. Thanks, Nadeli. It is a very exciting time indeed. Now, looking forward to COP28, hosted by the Emirates. We'll be, we'll, some of the team will be off to Dubai, no doubt, in 2020, 2023. So what are we looking forward to? What, what should we expect over the next 12 months, Emmanuel? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mari. I think the, uh, the momentum is, is there. Um, and in, as I said earlier, on climate in particular, I think we should be um, really uh, building from these uh, announcements that both Jinong and, and NDD described. Um, that the fact that the most populated and largest economy in this continent is, is actually indeed uh, putting trust in uh, the cost effectiveness and the usefulness of adopting our standards uh, is really telling something about the leadership of that continent here. So. Um, with that, I think it's really about implementation in the next 12 months. Of course, we have to finalize our standards. I'd say, and I said publicly, I think we are probably 70, 80 percent into the redeliberation of the substance. But standard setting is really about detailed work, and we need to continue and finish that. Um, one comment I'd make to characterize the next 12 months is, uh, you know, citing uh, the chair of IOSCO, Jean-Paul Servet, yesterday on the main stage panel who basically said that IOSCO was um, already working uh, closely with us uh, to uh, endorse as uh, early as possible uh, our standards, and of course through their very important and deep uh, due process, but with a clear objective that uh, all companies know that uh, IOSCO is working so that they can, those companies around the world, prepare under our standards in their 24 cycle, 2024 cycle of disclosures. So it essentially means the next 12 months are really uh, going to be about the readiness for mandatory adoption. Um, of course, as CDP has shown, there will be voluntary adoption already. And these two parallel tracks should lead us to a fabulous a moment in COP28, basically, where on climate, with the foundation of S1 standard, um, you know, that uh, um, mandatory adoption and voluntary adoption play together, hopefully with maybe more than uh, Nigeria and others, uh, already uh, giving strong signals of their adoptions. I have to say, probably, hopefully, our efforts with Europe should have, um, you know, combined efforts, collective efforts to come to some very clear interoperability and uh, broad alignment of climate would be huge, uh, uh, um, you know, first building block uh, for further adoption and further um, uh, engagement of jurisdictions into that work by uh, COP28. So again, finalization of the design and really now turning uh, our efforts to implementation. No, it won't be an easy task, but guess what? We have the best team at the foundation, and I think we've got this. Thank you very much for your time, board members. Uh... Perhaps the last thing just to say is to close out and just congratulate Egypt. They've been an important part mm -hmm. of our journey. Um, the African Ministers Forum, the International Cooperation Forum, launched an early adoption initiative 
for the ISSB. It's been a very successful COP27 in terms of moving thought to action. A lot of the sounds we're hearing are about how do we just get this done? And that's perhaps the biggest step that we're taking towards COP28. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're out. Thank you very much for listening. For the latest developments from either the International Sustainability Standards Board or the International Accounting Standards Board, make sure to subscribe on the IFRS Foundation website, www.ifrs.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take some time to rate, review and subscribe on your preferred podcast player.